Good morning, everyone. May the Lord bless you as you listen to this message because he loves you very much. My name is Doug Sloan, and today I'll be presenting a message titled, Beware of False Prophets. Now, let me tell you why I'm presenting this topic. Today, the world faces so many challenges, such as global pandemic, political and civil unrest, wars and rumors of wars, and many other alarming events. As a result, Christians clearly see that we are living in the last days, just as the Bible predicts. Over the last several years, I've seen a huge increase of people posting so-called prophetic dreams and visions online. There is seemingly no end to rapture and tribulation dreams on YouTube. But here's the problem. Not all dreams and visions are from God. So how can we know what's true? That's what I want to talk to you about today. But before we get started, I'd like to open with a little humor to lighten the mood. Since our message today has to do with foretelling the future, I found a joke titled, What's He Going to Be? And it goes like this. An older couple had a son who was still living with them. The parents were a little worried as the son was still unable to decide about his future. So they decided to do a small test. They put a note on the front hall table. Around the note, they put a $10 bill, a Bible, and a bottle of whiskey. Then they hid, pretending they were not at home. The father told his wife, If our son takes the money, he will be a businessman. If he takes the Bible, he will be a pastor. But if he takes that bottle of whiskey... I'm afraid our son will be a no-good drunkard. So the parents hid in the nearby closet and waited nervously. Peeping through the keyhole, they saw their son arrive. The son read the note they had left. Then he took the $10 bill, looked at it again in the light, and slid it into his pocket. After that, he took the Bible, flipped through it, and put that under his arm. Finally, he grabbed the bottle, opened it, and took a whiff to be assured of the quality. Then he left for his room, carrying all three items. The father slapped his forehead and said, This is worse than I could ever imagine. What's wrong? asked the wife. Our son's going to be a politician. (laughs) Okay, I suppose that's one way of predicting the future, but it doesn't guarantee that it's right. So that brings us to today's message, starting with the fact that today we are hearing a lot of prophecies, especially about end-time events. And this should be expected because Acts chapter 2, verse 17 tells us, In the last days, God said, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. As I stated in the introduction, I do believe that we are living in the last days. Therefore, the words of this passage indicate that we should experience an increase of prophecies, since the Lord is pouring out His Spirit on all people. In the past, divine messages were typically given to Hebrew prophets who spoke to kings or nations. However, this passage is addressing Christians that includes men and women, sons and daughters, and people in all kinds of positions, not just those in leadership roles. In these last days, God is using whoever he chooses to proclaim his message to the world. Now, prophecy is exciting to hear, as it reminds us that God still speaks to people today. God is not like idols made of wood that cannot hear or speak. He's the Almighty, who is alive forevermore. Amen and amen. But we must realize that not everything spoken as prophecy is from God. For this reason, I want to talk about ways we can recognize the truth from deception. So let's begin by discussing how God speaks to us today. Primarily, we hear God speak to us by reading the Bible. Most Christians believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God to mankind, and it can be trusted without a doubt. But God can also speak to us in other ways, such as a prophetic word describing future events, 
or through tongues and interpretations in a worship service for the edification of the church, or by a word of knowledge presented to a particular person or group of people about a specific event or circumstance in their life. Now, there are two more ways that God speaks to us, and that's through dreams and visions. And these are the methods I want to focus on in this message. I'm doing this because today there are so many people falsely prophesying in this way. Social media platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and others are now full of people that feel called to share their dreams and visions with the world. Some claim to be prophets, but many claim to be watchmen, as described in Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 4, that says, The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, When I bring the sword against a land, and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet, to warn the people. Then, if anyone hears the trumpet but does not heed the warning, and the sword comes and takes their life, their blood will be on their own head. Today's so-called watchmen claim their job is to watch for signs of the soon return of Christ and to tell what they have seen in dreams and visions as a warning of things to come. As a serious student of the Bible, I've watched many of these messages over the last few years with great interest to see if what they say is truly of God or not. Of all the videos I've observed, there's a few people that I feel are rightly proclaiming God's message. But there are so many people that present questionable or outright false messages. So this begs the question, How can we know if a prophecy is true? Well, I'm glad you asked this question because God is very concerned that we can recognize the truth from a lie. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 21 through 22, God tells Moses how to know for sure if a word spoken by a so-called prophet is true. Listen to these verses that says, You may say to yourselves, How can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. So here we have a divine test, and by using this we can know for sure that a prophecy is not from God if it does not take place or come true. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If a prophecy comes true, it's from God. If it doesn't come true, that word is not from God, and the person proclaiming it is either a liar or they've been deceived by demonic spirits. Now, this passage ends by telling us that the prophet spoke wrong and not to be alarmed. In today's words, that would mean we should not be afraid by what they say or believe a lie. Now let me pause for just a moment of clarification. This test can only be determined if a person sets a specific date or a time period for the event to happen. Like the rapture, or an asteroid strike, or a tsunami, or some other major calamity supposedly coming on the earth. That's why many of the modern-day prophets do not specify a date, and they stress that fact. But there are still some date-setters out there, so beware. Now let's get back to the message. But what about those so-called prophets or watchmen that unknowingly proclaim false messages? What happens to them? Let me give you an example. I heard one nice fellow on YouTube predict a massive earthquake here in the United States that is so big it will almost split our nation in half. Really? But he kind of laughed and said, well, if it doesn't happen, praise the Lord. And if it does happen, praise the Lord. Hmm. While I like this person, that comment sent shivers down my spine. No. This brother's jovial comment was totally wrong. 
If his prophetic word does not come to pass, it's not okay. If his prediction doesn't happen, he's been deceived by Satan and he should never prophesy again. Speaking in the name of the Lord is serious business and the Bible tells us the punishment for people who falsely speak for God. Listen to the words of Deuteronomy 18 verse 20 that says, But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. Wow. This is pretty clear. There is no room for false prophecy. It's a good thing the church is not under the law, or else many Christians calling themselves prophets would be stoned to death. This may seem like a harsh punishment, but it shows us just how much God despises false prophecies. Okay, let's move on to the next point, which is, can good Christians be deceived? And the answer is yes. And that applies to two groups of Christians. The first group are those who claim to be prophets or watchmen. And the second group are Christians who hear and believe these false dreams and visions. So let's talk about both, starting with those who prophesy. I hear a lot of so-called prophets online that say they diligently pray for confirmation before they put anything out on the web. And I'm sure they do. No one wants to be used by Satan to spread false information. However, sometimes their prophecies are still wrong. I used to believe almost anyone who said they had a confirmed word from the Lord, but I've learned that all too often there are still some that are wrong. Yet they seem to be sincere. But I now understand that people can be sincerely wrong, and those who are wrong have been deceived. The dreams, visions, and interpretation they received came from Satan, not from God. Now, what about the people who hear and believe the lie? Yes, they are deceived too. Okay, my heart goes out to these people. Christians are at different spiritual levels from new believers to lifelong Bible scholars and everything in between. Younger Christians are more likely to be deceived due to their lack of Bible knowledge and experience. But even some mature Christians can fall prey to false teachings because the message sounds so good. However, with knowledge and understanding, we can discern the truth from a lie. Therefore, the question becomes, how can we recognize false prophecy and know the truth? Now, just because some modern-day prophecies haven't come true, we should not despise all prophecies, but we should judge what we hear. Paul, speaking on the orderly worship in church, gives us these instructions in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29, that says, Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. Here, Paul is speaking about general prophecies spoken in a church setting, not specifically about foretelling end-time events. Yet his instructions still apply. Yes, we still need to weigh what's being said very carefully. So how do we do that? Here are a few ways to judge. Ask yourself these questions. Does the prophecy align with the Word of God, or is it in conflict with the Scriptures? Can anyone else, with the spiritual gift of interpretation or discernment, confirm the prophetic word, dream, or vision? Does the prophecy go against God's character? Finally, does the word just feel wrong in your heart, like the Holy Spirit is troubled by the message? If any of these things are off, don't believe it. Then pray for wisdom and understanding. But again, our focus today is on dreams and visions. So how can we recognize false dreams and visions? As we listen to all the prophetic voices in the world, Today, concerning end-time events, there are several clues that people are not speaking from God. Here are a few specific things to be aware of. 
First off, beware of anyone that sets specific dates, like the exact date of the rapture or major calamities. Date setting is a dead giveaway. Next, don't believe anyone who says they know the identity of the Antichrist or the false prophet. These people will not be revealed until the tribulation. Also, beware of anyone who claims to know what the mark of the beast is or what 666 actually means. These things will also not be understood until the tribulation. Oh, people can guess, but they won't know for sure. Now here's something else to be aware of. Many people now post their dreams or visions online and then ask the public for their interpretation because they don't understand it. <laughs> Would God give a prophetic guessing game? I don't think so. That would make God a horrible communicator. And if the person giving their dream or vision didn't understand it, what kind of prophet would that make them? Well, it would make them a false prophet. Finally, beware of so-called prophets that want you to give them money or send donations to spread the word. Real prophets don't need money. They serve the living God who provides all their needs. These are all sure signs that these people are false prophets and we should not listen to them. Their judgment is coming. Now let me share a few examples of false end-time prophecies that I've heard this year. They concern events that were foretold to happen but failed to come to pass. Here are five examples. First off, the value of the American dollar was supposed to collapse causing hyperinflation here in the United States around October. Hmm, that didn't happen. Another unspecified cataclysmic event, supposedly something very big, was to happen in the United States on September 19th of 2020. Well, nothing happened on that day either. Later, a different prophecy stated that Another asteroid was supposed to hit the Earth the day before the U.S. presidential election on November 3rd. Once again, that didn't happen. More recently, a well-known pastor who has been foretelling future events from his dreams claimed that in the last two weeks of October, riots in the U.S. would escalate to the point that they would attack other rioters that were not violent enough. This simply did not happen. The violent riots during the summer months died down well before October, and it was relatively peaceful at that time. For a last example, the same person foretold that in the same last two weeks of October, rioters would attack the elderly for their beliefs, and that they would even break into nursing homes to harm them. Wow. That didn't happen either. Now, these are just a few false prophecies. I could name many more, like the White House being bombed, Air Force One being shot down, the burning of Washington, D.C., and more. But I'm sure you get the point. So, what happened? Why didn't these things come to pass? Was God wrong? Of course not. These so-called prophets and watchmen were simply deceived by false visions or dreams, and they received false confirmations. This is very sad for those who proclaim these things and for those who hear and believe the lies. Okay, now that we've spoken of some ways to identify false prophets, I want us to be aware of one last new deception and that's the so-called excuse for failed prophecies. I recently heard strong Christians say that if a prophecy does not come to pass, that could be the results of prayer that changed the outcome. This is simply incorrect. Prophecy is foretelling exactly what will take place in the future. God knows the end from the beginning, so he always gets it right. Okay, brothers and sisters, this brings us to the end of today's message. So let me give you a few closing thoughts. 
When we hear or watch end time prophecies online, we need to beware of false prophets. We should not believe everything we hear without judging it carefully against the word of God and with the discernment of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Satan would love to give us wrong information. And if we spread these false messages and they don't come to pass, we could destroy the faith of many, including our own. But let us judge wisely to know the truth. Remember the words of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 20 through 22, that says, Do not treat prophecy with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. And, no matter what anyone says, we should always be prepared for the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who will rescue us from this fallen world. Now let's close in prayer. Dear God in heaven, we love you, Father, and we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I pray that this message will help us to better recognize false prophecy. With so many people describing their end-time dreams and visions online, we need clarity. You know how much we want to know future events, and our desires in this area often cloud our judgment. Lord, help us to discern right from wrong so that we will not be deceived. And give us many opportunities to share your love and forgiveness with those who need to hear the word. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.